I've got the engine all back together again, the injector pumps back into this uh, 90 with the 2.5 naturally aspirated, but it won't start. It's not the engine that's problem because I, I think I know what the, what the issue is, but I just want to show you. Um, <clears throat> when you've got a non-starting vehicle, some of the things you've got to check, obviously, is <laughs> see if there's a battery on, but when you've got, you know, your lights on your dashboard here, they're on, and it goes like this. Can you hear? Click, click, click. You can hear the relay clicking, but nothing's happening. There's lights on, but no one's at home. So what I've done is, if you can see here, uh, how does this work here? Yeah. I hope you can see my voltmeter here. Um, if I turn the, I put a jump lead onto the uh, solenoid wire that goes onto the back of the starter. All right, and watch what happens when we turn the key. Nothing. Nothing at all. But watch what happens when I jump it with a screwdriver. So I have my jumper. This, this is the white and a red wire here. That goes to the solenoid and it's got a good connector on the end of it. But the top wire onto the top of the solenoid here comes from the battery. So there's 12 volts on there. But when we turn the key, we're getting nothing to that little tab that goes onto the solenoid, that one there. But watch what happens when I jump them across. We've got power, it's, it's turning. So, the problem is, something between the ignition switch and that white wire, white and red wire. Let's find out what it could be. As you can see here on the bottom of the fuse box, I've pulled all the relays out, and Land Rover in their infinite wisdom couldn't be bothered to write on the back of the cover, here, what the relays actually did. But you can see this, they're colour coded. They're um, yellow and green. And the green are for the five way, uh, not uh, open and close type relay. And the yellows are for this type relay. Okay? And then you've, you're familiar with the green ones. Now I've pulled all these lat out, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to test them individually first. I'm going to be using my world famous testerometer for checking relays. Now you can see there's a green light on here already. We're testing this relay here, this for the green ones. You see it's got a green plug, so this is for the green relay. Test it. Because these are a changeover relay, alright? These are just a straight on and off. And just to prove it, if we want to put a yellow one in there, I'll put the clamp meter there. Put this one in here. And we can see that little, little light comes on there, so we know that one's working. We know the machine's working. So, let's go through all the relays and find out if there's a problem. They do look a bit, well, used. Um, let's see if they're going to go in. So let's test the first one. That works. Put it over there. Next one. That's working. Next one. So far so good. That's come off there. Wait a minute, we'll put that lead back on. And this one. That's working. And finally, this one. So, all the relays are working. Now, what could this be? So, what we're going to do now is check if there's any power or, or a continuity between the the back of the uh, fuse box down here and the wire that comes out of the uh, starter, the red and white wire, the white with the red tracer, excuse me. So let's find out that. Now I think what we're going to have to do to make life a lot easier, I don't know if we can see under here, there we go, 
I'm going to have to uh, I'm going to pull out the screws from that uh, fuse box holder and look for the red and white wire that'll give us a good clue so I've unscrewed the fuse box and you can see there's the white wire with the red tracer on there and of course you've got a brown wire coming from the battery and you see this little white with a red tracer well that goes to your key and then there's a ground so that's the chap we're looking for for the starter so what we're going to do now is do a continuity test between here and the back of the solenoid that's where it goes and we want to see if there's any breaks in the wire so we're going to test that one to the back of the starter whenever I do any in, uh, test work with a multimeter I always, if I'm going to use the ringer to listen to the uh, for the continuity I always test it first just to make sure your battery is good and listen this is shorting the red and the black wires together alright so that's good so we know there's continuity between these wires you know on the multimeter oh, wait a minute zoomed in a bit too far there so we know there's continuity between those two wires what we're going to do now is I've put a jumper in the back where the uh, red and white wire goes let's look let's have a make sure yes nothing nothing at all ah. so that's our problem we've got um, We've got no power, no, no continuity between the relay and that wire. I've disconnected it from the back of the uh, starter so we're not isolating it or touching it through anything through ground. So the next thing is to find out where that wire actually goes. On these old 2.5s and all the Land Rovers that you would like 200 TDIs and stuff like that, they had a, an engine harness that was separate from the main harness. And this is the connection here. Let's zoom in a bit. Let's see if we can get this right. There we go. So you can see in the corner here, there's the red and the white there. And at the bottom, there's a red and a white here coming out. Now I've got some sort of suspicion there's a bad connection between the two. So how are we going to test that? Well, we're going to leave our, our test lead on the back of the uh, relay socket and we're going to test the continuity between here and the back of the relay socket let me get set up so now I've got my multimeter again and I've unplugged it and I'm going to put the continuity onto here can you hear? we've got continuity onto there so the next one we're going to check is the continuity between the back of the starter and the other side of this plug which is down here now so let me get set up for that. Oh, let's see. So there's the red and the white, or the white and the red. Nothing, nothing at all. Now let's check the continuity. That's good. So that doesn't work. So somewhere between here and the uh, the the connector on the back of the starter, there is a bad connection. Now. This is an old car. We don't really know what the wiring's like. I'll tell you what we're going to do. The rest of the wiring's okay. So what I'm going to do, I've got nothing to lose. I'm going to cut this wire here and put a splice and put a piece of wiring all the way to the starter and then see if we've got a continuity. Uh, it's a bit of a cop-out really, you know, technically speaking, you should buy a new en engine harness but we're in Canada, we can't just go down to the hardware shop and buy one. So uh, let's do that. So I replace the wire, the white wire, or the white and red, I keep getting it mixed up. And I used some of this stuff here, this is, what gauge is this? This is 12 gauge, American gauge, wiring almost the same, in fact maybe it's a bit heavier than the original wire and I put one of those yellow type connectors, you know, see these, the, the yellow ones uh, spade connector on the back now down here I did something a little bit different let's see if we can zoom in a bit and see what uh, you see here 
I actually cut the wire coming from the harness itself and put in a connector and a male and female in there so if we want to take the engine out we just disconnect that and then I'll tie the wire up into this the original the new wire into the original harness and cut out the old one it is a bit of a cop out but it's an old car and is it worth spending a great deal of money and money and effort on it you know what I mean so there we go oh and I'll just show you another another patreon thing we got was a decent set of crimpers uh, these are really nice because they'll do insulated non insulated and even spark plug wires which are really handy for the old wrecks that I do so does it start well, I better move these out of the way in fact I've got to move everything out of the way so let's see Put a bit of glow plug on. No worries, it's a runner. So I've got a few little bits and pieces yet to do on this engine, and then I'll come back and do a review on it. Just before I go, there is something else I forgot. The charge light is always on on the dash. Strange, eh? Doesn't go out, doesn't even flicker, doesn't do anything. As if it's going to ground. Now, the strangest thing is, this alternator is charging. I thought it was. How do we know? We've used the DC clamp meter on the output wire going to the battery. Let me set the camera up and I'll show you. So I've, I've zeroed in the DC clamp meter. Uh, it doesn't look like it. it's showing, what is it, a milliamp? I can't really see it through this screen. Uh, yeah, a little bit of discharge back through the alternator. I'm not really sure if I need to zero it or not. Let me zero it. There we go. Well, point one, that's close enough for us. So now I'm going to start the car and you'll see uh, if it's charging. Well, you can't see, can you? So it's putting out to 16.50. You see, as it's charging up, it's going down. The battery's fully charged, so it's putting the charge back in. So that's charging. Yeah, that's not doing too bad. Uh, I'll put the lights on and see if it'll put some load. So I put the heater and the lights on and you can see the alternator now is working well because it's now putting out 22 amps to make up for the heater and the headlamps. Overload, now it's going to overload, like me. Anyway, so we know the alternator is alright, so why is the charge light working? Let's find out. The charging system on these uh 2.5s is extremely simple, there's nothing much complicated about it. All it's got is two wires. There's a big power wire coming out the back of the alternator and that small little stubby wire around about there, that one is a 12 volt supply. That's the exciter wire. So how the circuit works, in your dashboard you've got a wire coming from your key. From your key it goes through a light bulb, from the other side of the light bulb it comes down here into this rectifier pack. Now what happens is when the, when the alternator is stationary power goes through the wire, through the bulb, down to here and grounds. Remember that. When it grounds it puts the light bulb on. Now when, the, when it charges up the power goes the other way up the wire and puts the light out because it's putting 12 volts out through that wire which balances the, the 12 volts both sides of the bulb, so therefore the bulb can't light. Extremely clever. So, 
how are we going to fault find this? Well, simple. What we're going to do first of all is take the take the wire off the back of that alternator, which hasn't got a connector on. It's looking a bit shonky. Uh, we're going to take that off and clean it up and uh, see if we've got 12 volts on there. So we've set up the multimeter. We, we've got the black wire we're going to put onto the ground, the red wire onto the multi multimeter, and we've set the multimeter to DC volts on automatic. And now we're going to test for voltage. Oh, what a surprise, we've got 12 volts. So, what does that mean? Well, wait a minute, can't see there. What it means is, we've got power coming down from the ignition switch to the, um, to the alternator, so that's good. But, there's nothing coming out of the alternator, even though it's putting amps out, to extinguish the light. Not a big problem. Is it worth living with? I don't know. It is charging, but it ain't right, because whoever's going to jump in, it's going to worry about the light being on. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. These alternators are pretty common, but I haven't got any parts for them. Fortunately though, just down the road, about 500 metres down the road, is an alternator shop and a battery a charging starter shop thing. You know, it does all sorts of bits and pieces like that. And he has a lot of stock. The thing is, it's just as cheap for him to fix it for a few bucks than it is for me to fiddle about backwards and forwards, running up and down, saying it's not this bit, it's not that bit. So what I'm going to do is take this alternator off, pop it down there in the morning, and then we'll continue this video tomorrow with it on and see if we've got the light off. I know it's a bit of a cop-out, I know I should show you how to do it, but I ain't got the parts. The thing is, I don't know what parts we need, and, and it looks like a... Well... It looks like a Lucas one, but I could be wrong, and I usually am. Alright, so let's get this taken off. In the last scene, last night, I mentioned that I was going to take this down to the alternator shop and get it checked. Well, there was something bugging me on my mind last night, and I thought to myself, there's something wrong. How come it's charging? I noticed that there was a wire wrapped around this post here. Now, generally speaking, on a lot of Land Rovers, they have this post which goes to the warning light. However, in this instance, this is for the tachometer feed. So, where is the charge light uh, connector? Well, it's here. <laughs> They've got a Lucas plug, but it was hidden by that, if you see what I mean. There was no markings on it at all. So, what I've done is I've got my, uh, got my Dremel cleaned up the contact and I'm just going to put a Lucar on the wire, swap it over and with a bit of luck it should work. So let's get that fitted and let's get this bloody thing moving. So does the light go out? Yes. Let's turn this off a bit. So we've, we've just gone through a few common, common electrical faults, non-starting, non-charging, see it all the time. But they didn't cost much to fix. Usually it's through somebody else putting wires on wrong or just bad connections. I mean, 30 years old, what do you expect? So, it was a cheap and cheerful fix. It's on the road. So we'll, let, we'll wrap this video up and let's get it uploaded and so you can see, <laughs> see. But we are dealing with a vehicle that's got lots of bad connections on it. Uh, when I pull the dash off, there's a lot of, um, mud and <laughs> water been behind here so I don't offer too much hope for reliability in the future it needs a lot of work but as you can see from its appearance I don't think it's really going to be on the road it's more like on the farm so at least the engine's going to be reliable it's going to start I'm going to finish off by tie wrapping up some of the loose wires get them out of the way and that's it so I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you could actually understand what I was doing if you don't write down below and I'll try and explain the best as I can all right we'll see you in the next video